look, it's no secret around here we talk a lot about Nintendo Switch 2. I'm not even going to sit here and pretend it's not a major topic of the channel because it is. And look, we have another video coming later today that isn't related to Switch 2, but we needed to talk about this key feature for the system because it is something that has been widely debated and we really have some direct evidence for it. Now, there's a rumor that it has to do with it as well, but we actually got evidence quite a bit ago from a partner company with Nintendo that this feature is going to actually be there on Switch 2. And it is a very important one because it deals with backwards compatibility. Now, if you look at the history of Nintendo systems, whether it was home console or handheld, for the most part, they have done, within reason, one generation of backwards compatibility. The 3DS could play DS games. The DS could play Game Boy Advance. The Game Boy Advance could play Game Boy. Oh, but we're not done there. Uh, how about the Nintendo Wii? The original run of that being able to play GameCube games. What about the Wii U being able to play Wii? Now, obviously, Switch wasn't compatible with discs, so you weren't going to get Wii U backwards compatibility. The Super Nintendo wasn't backwards compatible with the Nintendo Entertainment System, and likewise, the N64 to uh, the SNES, and obviously, the GameCube to the N64. But the cartridge format, when it changes so drastically, is obviously hard to maintain backwards compatibility for. A little bit less so with Nintendo with their handhelds, because the cartridge formats weren't changing drastically but obviously now we're sitting here in 2024 expecting a new system to come out and wanting to know what the heck is going on with backwards compatibility well one thing we need to bring up is from an interview we covered a long while ago dealing with mario plus rabbit sparks of hope and this is what ubisoft had to say about this game and i think it's key when we're talking about backwards compatibility Although I think it was a different issue with Mario, we had already released a Mario Rabbids game on Switch. So by doing another, we had two similar experiences on one machine. On Nintendo, games like this never die. There are 25 Mario games on Switch. Nintendo has advised that it's better to do one iteration on each machine. We were a bit too early. We should have waited for the next console. Because you could play a great game. And we think it'll last for 10 years because we will update it for the new machine that will come in the future. Now, this could or could not be a hint at that. Uh, when you hear update, to me, that feels like, hey, you're going to be able to play this game on Switch 2 with your current, you know, your current copy of it. But we're going to provide an upgrade, right? We're going to do higher resolutions. Um, it will throw in some new lighting systems in there, ray tracing and all that. Maybe even faster frame rates, right? That's sort of what you're hearing when you hear update people also at the time were taking this to mean oh they're gonna make like a deluxe version of the game repackage it re-release it charge 70 bucks yada 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 pack all the dlc in and that is obviously a route they might take as well but i think what even helps further this is a recent rumor from nash weedle now look I know not everyone knows the history of Nash Weedle. For the most part, he gained credibility for calling Metroid Dread before it happened, right? The game wasn't even announced yet. He said, hey, we're getting Metroid Dread. It's releasing later this year. Yada, yada, yada. Ended up being true. Ended up coming out. So, look, Metroid Dread was obviously a known name because it was a canceled Metroid project from a long time ago. But nobody was really talking about that particular project coming back except for him. He also said who was developing it, which was Mercury's team. So, hey, give him some credit for that. Other things he's talked about since then haven't come to fruition yet. You know, that, that's sort of the way you have to look at it as if you want the history of him, hey, he hasn't gotten anything wrong technically yet, but most of what he said is stuff that applies to the future, and this is one of them. Now, we talked about this briefly in another video. We brought up his Bayonetta post, right? How there's going to be a Bayonetta trilogy coming to Nintendo Switch 2. But one thing he did note about the upgrades, he talked about the upgrades, and I was really confused when I was reading this, and thankfully you guys, my actual audience, in the comment section, many of you who speak his language natively, so I don't have to rely on a translation, clarified what he was talking about. And the second part of what he was talking about dealt with the idea that while these upgrades are going to be there in this trilogy collection, if you already own Bayonetta 1, 2, and 3 on Nintendo Switch, through backwards compatibility, you're going to get these upgrades on Switch 2. You do not need to buy the trilogy to get 
the upgrades. So essentially what Nash Weedle did, and this went under the radar, is he put a rumor out there that Nintendo Switch 2 is going to have backwards compatibility. You combine this with Ubisoft referencing doing upgrades to the games as well, and you start to paint a picture that there is likely going to be backwards compatibility on Nintendo Switch 2. And again, this is such a major feature for launch. I don't think backwards compatibility makes or breaks the success of Switch 2 because, I mean, come on, Nintendo Switch didn't have backwards compatibility, didn't make or break the success of that, right? Uh, so a Game Boy didn't have, have it, uh, the, the Super Nintendo didn't have it, so we can't sit there and say it's a make or break feature, but what you want heading into launch of a new system is you want everything to be positive. You want all of the buzz around your system to be positive. And we just saw when PlayStation was actually talking about maybe not allowing free upgrades for their games and charging money for them when they brought PlayStation 5 out, there was even a moment, a brief period of time, when Sony refused to confirm that you could even play PlayStation 4 games on PlayStation 5. Meanwhile, Xbox just straight up said, hey, you can not only just play Xbox One, do you have an, X an original Xbox disc? Stick it in the system and you can play it. So Xbox was pushing this whole BC thing. Meanwhile, PlayStation wouldn't even confirm PS4 backwards compatibility. Of course, we all know how that played out. You can play your PlayStation 4 games on PlayStation 5, but it did create this negative perception around the next PlayStation system that Sony eventually clarified before launch that yes, you will be able to play PlayStation 4 games. And I think that is just a marketing thing, right? You don't want negative buzz around your new system. And so I do think Nintendo will likely include backwards compatibility. Again, it extends the life of games. It also builds confidence in Switch owners with massive libraries upgrading to a Switch 2 maybe sooner than they may have done otherwise. Like they might have waited till the library was big enough that they want to get the new system. But hey, if you already know you can play all your current games there, you're really just upgrading your current Switch, and you know some of the games you get will have upgrades for them, and obviously you'll get to play all of the new games. So yeah, I, I think that there is an inherent value add for the consumer, especially around launch, to have backwards compatibility. Now, I, I do think, and Nintendo's done this before, they might phase out backwards compatibility later on in the Nintendo Switch 2 generation as they make iterative systems and they release new versions of the Nintendo Switch 2 or whatever they call this thing. But I do think there's going to be backwards compatibility. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, and this is just addressing some of the comments out there. And yes, I read your comments, guys. There are some people that think it's weird that we're just addressing this as another Switch. Like, Nintendo's this weird company. We should expect them to do this. Okay, well, let's look at the history of Nintendo, just briefly, a very brief history. When the DS blew up, did they not release a sequel system? Of course they did. When the Wii blew up, did they not release a sequel system? Of course they did. When the Nintendo Entertainment System blew up, did they not release a sequel system? Oh, look, of course they did. When the Game Boy blew up, did they not release a sequel system? Look, guys, that's what Nintendo does. If you want to say Nintendo's this weird company and you never know what they're going to do, and yet, every time they've been successful, they've been pretty damn predictable in what they're going to do next. On top of that, people forget about the Japanese market. Okay, The Japanese market massively prefers handheld consoles over anything else. Nintendo is not going to abandon that market. On top of that, Nintendo has very little competition in what they're doing. People will bring up all the handheld PCs, and that's great. Handheld PC market is a nice market. But the best selling of them, the Steam Deck has sold maybe 3 million at most. Nintendo Switch is at 130 mil. It's in a category of its own. There is no competition for it. You have the exclusive games. Look, guys, there's no reason for Nintendo to leave this market. The market hasn't left them. See, unlike the Wii and DS, where it kind of felt like a lot of that got absorbed into smart devices like tablets and phones, it doesn't really feel like anything's really replaced in a fundamental way what the Nintendo Switch does, meaning it's a ripe category to keep bringing out new systems in. So you add that to the fact that the demand for Switch, while it's going down, isn't sinking as fast as prior systems, showing a clear demand for this type of product. People are just ready for something that does a bit more, right? They they want it, when Hogwarts Legacy comes to a platform like Switch, they want it to actually look and run well. They're starting to see a little age with this system and just kind of hoping that there's going to be a new one soon. So Look, guys, I think we're getting a Switch 2 in 2024, but more importantly, it looks like signs are starting to point to us being more and more confident that backwards compatibility 
will be there at launch. I want to thank you guys so much for being here. I want your thoughts on backwards compatibility and how important you think it is to Nintendo's next system. And you know what, guys? We'll catch you in that next video.